In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an easy DIY raised planter bed using some simple techniques and some basic tools. But before we jump into it, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials. Here's the tools and materials you'll need for this project. We're going to start first with the 6 inch cedar pickets. We're going to need about 12 of those along with three 3 inch cedar pickets, two 2 by 2s Now we're using treated 2 by 2s and a treated 2 by 4 As far as tools goes for cutting, you can use either a circular saw like this one here or a miter saw. I'm going to be using a miter saw. It is a little bit easier if you have one of those. Obviously things for measuring and marking, I've got a tape measure and then a square. To assemble everything together, we're keeping it simple using some exterior liquid nail and a drill and driver with exterior screws. For the drill, I am going to be pre-drilling some holes using a 964 inch bit and then a half inch bit for the drainage holes that we're going to drill at the end of the project. To assemble most of the project, we're going to be using this one inch zinc screw. And for the legs and some other parts of the project, these two inch exterior screws. We'll also use the liquid nails as part of the assembly. What's great about this particular type of liquid nail is it's going to have a strong bond on pretty much anything uh, wood, treated wood, OSB, plywood, all the things, and it is waterproof and weatherproof. Perfect for this project. Now, as far as treating it, we're going to use this Thompson's water seal. This is a clear multi-surface waterproofer. What's great about that is it doesn't change the color of the cedar if you like that natural cedar look. And then we're going to be attaching this weed barrier with a heavy duty staple gun and some quarter inch staples. We're going to take seven cedar pickets and we're going to cut those to 48 inches. That's going to be the bottom part of the planter and the side. So three for the bottom and two for each side. We're going to take the scraps that are left over. I'm going to use that for the support pieces that are going to go on the bottom and the sides. As you can see, the width here is about 16 and a half inches, and these are half inch thick, so we need to cut the piece about 17 and a half inches. That way we have some overhang for the side pieces to sit on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the middle here. We'll place one board in the middle, allowing for half inch overhang on either side. Same thing with the boards on the end. We're going to have half inch of an overhang all the way around the edges on both sides. So we got two feet. This isn't exactly six inches, it's five and a half, but that's going to be two and three quarters will be our halfway point there. So I'll mark two and three quarters up here, two and three quarters here. So there's my middle mark. I've measured two and three quarter over to this side. That's going to be the side where the board is. So there's the middle two and three quarters over to this side. That way, whenever I move the board into place and glue it, it'll be lined up. You can be generous with it if you want. So we're going to go ahead and set this like this. And I'm going to make sure also that I've got that half inch of overhang. Okay, now I'm going to take my screws. Again, these are those one inch zinc screws. There we go. And I'm not going really close to the edge of the board. Same thing over here on this end. I'm going to go ahead and press it down by pushing it out. Now I'm about half an inch. Looks good. So you can pre-drill if you want, but you definitely don't want to start splitting that wood. So just don't countersink and you should be fine. Again, it doesn't matter how many you use. I like to do at least two per board. Flip this over. I'm going to sandwich it from the other side. So we're going to screw in from the other side that way. We're not relying on just the screw strength holding it this way. The screw is going to be basically um, working on both sides of the board. All right.
Now with the base assembled, we can move on to creating the sides. To do that, we're taking the off cuts that we have left and essentially cutting those in half to 11 and 3 quarter inches. Here I'm cutting all four pieces together at once on my miter saw, which is actually more than what I need, giving me eight total pieces. We only need six, three per side. Uh, and as you can see here, you will have uh, a couple of the pieces that we'll take from the very tip of the fence picket with that little dog-eared section, which is fine. We're gonna use those on the ends, which will be covered up by the leg portions later on. As you can see, I'm laying out my two 48 inch pieces on top of my base, just as a guide so that whenever I add the side supports here, I can easily line them up visually instead of having to remeasure everything. The only difference with the side pieces is you're gonna have an inch and a half of overhang on the ends and at the bottom. The top part, as you can see there, is gonna be flush. That way we can add the trim to the top part later on. After getting all the pieces glued and screwed together, we can flip the piece over and add some screws on the other side exactly the same way we did the base. Once one side is completed, we'll do another side the exact same way. And I'll show you here in this top-down view. And with the sides complete, we can now move on to creating the inside structure of the box using the two by twos. We'll need to take one two by two and cut that into two 48 inch pieces. And we'll take the other two by two and cut four 14 inch pieces from that. With those pieces cut, we're gonna line them up with the bottom part of the base here, uh, essentially spreading them out so that they're evenly spaced. And then we're going to pre-drill and screw them together with the two inch screws. Once all these pieces are screwed together, it'll look something like this. The next thing we're gonna do is apply some liquid nail and then attach it to the base. The glued side is actually going to be on the inside part of the box. The side of the base that you see here is actually the underside part of the box. We're going to pre-drill and use two inch screws on the thicker areas that have two boards, as you can see here. And then one inch screws on the thinner areas in order to attach the bottom part of the base to this frame. Now I probably added more screws than is needed, but just to be extra safe, I did add a couple of screws to the center board here, as you can see. I just used my square to line up where that board was underneath. Okay, so we've gotten the frame attached to the inside. Now on the original video that I did, I didn't do this, but this will help strengthen it up. Um, and also it gives us some extra um, wood to attach the sides to. Uh, this, this platform, we'll be able to hold a lot of dirt, no problem. Let's we'll start with this side first. So as you can see here, this part of the side is going to be flush with the ends here. And then as we add our end pieces, those will join up in this direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little glue around this, and then we're gonna pre-drill and then screw this board in. Anywhere I have uh, one inch thickness over here, I'm using my two inch screw. That way um, it's not coming through the other side. So I pre-drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. So we've already added one side over here. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And then when we attach the side, right, this is gonna overhang right there. It's gonna sit on this little ledge. So that's why we have this come out about a half inch so that we have a ledge to sit the side on and you don't have to hold it in an artwork position or anything like that. So you wanna line it up like this where the edge is flush with the edge over there. And I don't need to drill all the way through, just enough 
so that it acts as a guide for my screw. And then once you have one screw in, it's easier to do the rest. Move on down to the middle board here. Same thing, you're just gonna line it up so that you're drilling into that two by two. So now that we've attached the sides, we're gonna add some support here on the ends using what's left of this two by two. And for this part, you don't need to bust out the tape measure. Just take what's left, line it up, make your mark. That way we can make sure that these pieces are flush with the top part of the box. And then we're going to glue and screw those into place as well using two inch screws. So now we've got this whole thing shored up. It kind of looks like a bench that's upside down, uh, but it's gonna be very strong and able to support a lot of weight. So if you wanted to fill the whole thing up with dirt, it's not gonna be a problem. In this next step, we're going to create the ends of the box using one six inch picket that we're gonna cut into four 17 and five eighth inch sections. Seventeen and five eighths. It's sort of an awkward measurement because we're going off the thickness of these sides, just approximately half an inch. Um, but what we're doing is, you just want to make sure that these pieces fit in here like this, sort of. And you may need to kind of force this apart a little bit to make sure that they fit. But essentially, that's what we're going for. So what we're going to do is, we're going to add some glue. We're going to screw this in on both sides, and we'll have our box. In reality, you probably don't need the glue. The glue is just gonna really help keep this thing together over time. The screws also will as opposed to nails. Uh, nails would just eventually slip out. Uh, that's why I'm using screws. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and save some of these screws. So I'm not using a whole bunch. I'll just use maybe one on each board since we are gonna go back and add legs to the sides. So that is the primary construction of the box. If you don't wanna add legs, you could just leave it as is and just trim out the top. That's the last step in this build is to take these uh, regular size three inch pickets. We're gonna miter it at the ends so that it looks nice. And then we're just going to, you know, screw it into place but if you want it high enough so that you've got you know a uh, waist level easy access to your garden uh, we're going to do about 28 inch high legs that'll be attached to the sides Once all eight pieces are cut, it's time to attach them. We're gonna flip the box upside down and we're gonna attach it with the same glue and two inch screws. We're gonna start first by attaching the board to the side of the piece and making sure that it's flush with the end of the box. And then we're gonna attach the next board so that the outer edge is flush with the leg we just attached. That's gonna give us this strong L shape. 
Now it's not going to be the only thing supporting the box is we're going to end up adding a cut piece of 2x4 on the inside part of that that will also aid in supporting this whole piece, especially once dirt and all that stuff is added in. Now that the outside part of the legs are done, we're going to reinforce that with the 2x4s as I mentioned earlier. Measure the inside part uh, from the bottom part of the box to the top part of the leg and then make your cuts. For me it was about 16 and an eighth, but you don't have to be exact with this. You just want that 2x4 to sit on the inside and create support for the structure. And with those pieces cut out, we're going to attach them the same way using some glue and a couple of two inch screws there on the outside part of the leg. Uh, this is going to be more than enough, especially with the glue, to hold the legs in place and make them very sturdy uh, in order to support all the dirt and stuff we're going to add into this box later on. With the legs complete, we can start adding the trim to the top. I'm using regular cedar pickets for this. Start first by cutting the dog hair part off at a 45 degree and then lining it up so that the inside part of that 45 degree matches up with the inside part of the box. As you can see here, I'm making a mark and then drawing a 45 on it. And once I've made that cut, I basically transpose those measurements to another cedar picket. With the two outside pieces cut, I laid them on the top of the box, cut the remaining bit at a 45, and then laid that on top so I could see where the next 45 degree cut needed to be made. I did a quick test fit, and then started to glue and screw those into place. And I know I mentioned this before, but the reason I'm using screws and glue on this project is because I've noticed in other planters, especially ones built out of cedar, that if you only rely on nails or other things like that, eventually over time, uh, it's going to start to fall apart. You may want to move a box of this side too to put it in a good location. That way you can make sure it's getting plenty of sun. So using screws and glue is going to help this piece stay together over the long run. And now to finish the piece, we're going to add some drainage holes to the box. I'm using a half inch drill bit and just making, you know, as many holes as I think are necessary. And then we're sealing the entire thing up with a Thompson's water seal. You can use any kind of stain if you'd rather stain it. Uh, you just want to make sure that the wood is treated because it's going to be sitting outside. And then finally, the last step is to staple in any kind of weed barrier or plastic, something that's going to act as a barrier between the water and dirt we're going to add in and the wood. And that's it. All we need to do is fill it up with dirt and watch the plants grow. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Let us know what future builds you'd like us to tackle. And don't forget, if you make one of our projects, to let us know on Instagram. Send us a picture so we can post it online. We'd love to share what you guys are making. Stay creative, and as always, have a good one.